Hi everyone, Patrick Delahinty here, and I am bringing you an interview with a legend in voice acting. He is the voice of Optimus Prime in the original Transformers and the Michael Bay movies, and Transformers Prime and several other of the spin-offs. And uh, it's Peter Cullen. Now, I grew up watching Transformers, and I loved Optimus Prime, and it was just an honor to be in the same room as THE Peter Cullen. And it, I, I had a fanboy moment. I couldn't think of any questions to ask that hadn't already been asked. Uh, this interview was done at SAC Anime back in the uh, beginning of January. And so this was a press panel interview. So there were uh, questions being asked by a dozen different outlets, uh, websites and newspapers and podcasts. And uh, so we'll let them ask the questions, but I hope you enjoy this press panel interview with Peter Cullen. For a lot of us, Transformers was a big part of our childhood, and I was wondering if you were a child and you watched Transformers, how would you react to it? You know, I, I, actually, that's a wonderful question because I've I've noticed when I was growing up that there were a few things outside of you know blocks and uh, or little wooden trains that you pulled that today you buy, you know, when you're visiting some mountain village. But um, <clears throat> I think I would have loved it. I, I, the way my kids uh, handled it, I, I was amazed by the amount of time they, they took to be transfixed by it. So uh, given that and being the same mindset, I'm sure I would have been stuck. <laughs> not, they are, not that they're not stuck on videos today, but, you know, we had radio back in those days. I might sound like an antique. <laughs> uh, you know, we had radio back in those days. Well, let's face it, when I was 7, 10, 11 years old, I had a radio in my bedroom. And uh, the old Marconi, you know, they're that big. And with the, the material behind the carved wood. And it's good for the stations to listen to. I was a communist for the FBI, you know. <laughs> Aston Blackie. <laughs> uh, the North and a lot of the uh, comedy stuff and Jack Benny and stuff. So uh, that was an imaginative process. But today, I think it's the combination of, of both. I mean, you, you have an, something that your, your hands can see other than just your ears and your imagination. And, uh, I mean, you can talk about Transformers or Legos or any of those other things. Participation, that's, the, the kids are participating. Uh, and uh, I would have loved it. I mean, I would have, I would have loved it. I mean, I, I think of me putting my iron hide <laughs> into the trailer of Optimus Prime. Uh, and uh, if I were, you know, 10 years old doing that, I think, I mean, I would have loved that. Yeah, sure. Excellent question. Uh, next question. All right. So you have been doing Transformers since at least uh, 1984. So um, with that long uh, time period, my question is, uh, with 2014 as technology nowadays, how is it much different than back in 1984 when you did it? Anything from back then that may be a lost art today? And anything from now that you like that unfortunately 1984 maybe not have and you would have loved to have back then? Well, certainly the memories are there. <clears throat> Excuse me. The memories are there from '84 because it was uh, it was innovative and it was a cartoon. Yet it was done the first time like that, and and you had toys that uh, you could associate with as well. Working in the Generation One series, you, we all worked together. There'd be ten of us in a room or more sometimes. And there was always a generating feel of the inspiration. You were, you were energized by, by your fellow actors. And I, I miss that a lot. I don't have the opportunity to do that as much anymore. But certainly my memories always are around the camaraderie that we had as a group and the fun that we had. I don't know if they have the same amount of fun that we had back in 84, but uh, 
a lot of my friends are still friends from that era. You know? Frank Welker being one of them. Mm -hmm. yes. I call him the king. <laughs> <laughs> he is, he's the king. Genuine, wonderful, wonderful guy. So I, I really think that was one of the, the differences. Um, I think now as we've gone into this next generation, 30 years later, or in this case 28 years later, or maybe more longer, for uh, Transformers Prime, when I discovered how much money they spend on each episode, I mean, that would have been an entire series. Hmm. But uh, uh, the animation today is so f it's superior. I mean, right down to shadows, and which you rarely saw in Generation One. Um, I enjoy watching it with my grandkids, my grandkids, and to see their faces locked, you know, like that. But yet, that was the same for Generation One. Kids were locked. I was watching a program, a, a movie, and I forget the name of the movie, but um, it was really weird. And there was a, a shot where the kid is watching television and in the background it's, uh, it's upper, uh, Transformers Generation One playing in the background and it was me giving one of those spiels, you know. And I was caught off guard, you know, I, I wondered, I said, did it really make that much of an imprint? And of course it did, but at the time I wasn't aware of that. I was only interested in the fact that maybe, maybe you know, they're running this on a you know, feature film. You know, maybe I'll get a couple of bucks, you know. I mean, <laughs> maybe they'll throw a scale at me, which is 110 bucks or something. Yeah. I, I, sorry, I swayed away from the question. I can't remember the original. Did I answer it? You did. Oh, good. <laughs> Well, all right, Robbie. Uh, you've been a part of some incredibly long-lasting and beloved franchises. Are there any series out there that you have yet to have the opportunity to be a part of that you would like to? Um, well, there's so many now. Uh, there was just a handful back in the 80s. And prior to that, before I broke into animation, and it took me a good 10 years to break down that door because there was such a... Um, a source of talent and I was talking today um, that talent was hired back in prior to the 80s for the amount of characters that a voiceover artist could do and you get paid for one but you'd have to do three additional so you could do as many as four voices in a show and get paid only for one if you got paid for the fifth voice you get paid twice so naturally, the studios will take advantage of that, like, and then whether they do that today, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm very old, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, today, there's an opportunity because there's so much more out there, as you well know. I mean, even my TV has, you know, 900 channels or something. <laughs> 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 when I go through the channels, I, uh, there's an awful lot of animation, and so. Uh, plus the fact that there's an awful lot of talent, a lot of great, good, great talent. Yeah, there wasn't that uh, many outlooks when I was first starting out. And as I said, it took 10 years to break down the door of Disney and Hanna-Barbera and Ruby Spears and some of the other companies. Looking back, wow, it's a long time ago and today there's so much more. All right. I have another question. Another general question. Going once. Can you go again? Uh, yeah. One. I'll do one last one. If nobody else has anything. Well, oh. well. Oh, sorry. Okay. Rashad, go ahead. Um, you know, almost thirty years later, did you ever think that you know, Optimus Prime would be such a huge character that you'd still be doing him? I mean, he's no, <laughs> not a bit. You know, to be honest, when I was um, 
killed in the uh, 1986 movie that with uh, Orson Welles. <laughs> I had no idea why. I've answered this question before, and, and uh, but to, to, in all truthfulness, when I was uh, reading the death scene, uh, I was stunned. I said, you know, a lot of things go through your mind as an actor. You'll say, uh, was I that bad? You know, uh, what did I do? Uh, what's the reason? I mean, yeah, and you, you try, you, but you're going to look for the most negative, you know, and I did. I, I said, well, you know, I must really suck. This is, you know, I mean, because we had no feedback. We didn't have uh, fan letters. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have any source of communication with the outside. Uh, if, if in fact there were fans that wrote letters, we never received them. So there was no gauge, there was no thermometer at all to, 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 uh, to tell you, you know, what the popularity status as you have today. So uh, when it, uh, when the opportunity came for me to do a convention in Rochester, New York, and I think that was 1997, uh, I went back and I had to be convinced to go back to it because Quite frankly, I didn't spend any time thinking about it for all those years. And when I went back, I was really surprised at the uh, the, the reception that I got. And it opened my eyes, and that's when I first began to realize that uh, through numerous uh, expressions of, of gratitude coming from the audience, and in some cases heartwarming and uh, very, very uh, Mind, mind moving, and it was from that point on. So I would say 1997. So it's quite a few years during the convention circuit. But I had no idea up until that point. Uh -huh. There was a kid in New York City, and this was at the very, very beginning. And I've shared this before, but it, it, it sticks in my heart. The kid got up in the middle of the audience, <clears throat> and he said, with the New York accent, I forgive myself right now and any other New Yorkers in here that they <laughs> say, hey, don't do that New York accent, Peter. You know, you don't, you, what are you doing that for? You, you can't speak <laughs> no, hey, get out of here. Anyway, this kid got up and he said, Mr. Colin, I just got to tell you, if it weren't for you, I'd either be in jail or I'd be dead. All my friends, either in jail or the dead. But I came home to watch Transformers. And he's just a young guy. I mean, he can't be 20 years old. And he's a tough little guy. And um, I just listened to him. If it weren't for you, I, I mean, for me watching Transformers, just, just me, uh, you know, you were my father. You raised me. <laughs> whoa. So yeah, that was a whoa. I never forgot that. And in, in the successive moments like that in my career as a voice actor, I was calling myself a voice-ician. Hey, you got music guys, a musician, <laughs> voice-ician. Okay. So I, I think about it all the time. and, it, it, and uh, Inevitably, at one point or another, there's going to be something very similar to that. Even here today, uh, I've experienced it a couple of times. So it's very humbling, and it's uh, it's a marker in your life. And you become very grateful for it. All right. Well, if I can be allowed one question, actually, Mr. Cullen, uh, I know that you must get a ton of invitations to other similar events. Uh, what? inspired you to join us here in Sacramento? Well, uh, I think what came into play the most was the, uh, the treatment um, and, and the, the fact of the going back and forth with management and, uh, and, and me on both sides. Uh, I was asked to pay particular attention to Sacramento. I was told that you were going to really enjoy it. 
And that's an understatement because, quite uh, frankly, this is perhaps, perhaps the best one I've ever been to. I've never been treated so well. I've never met so many wonderful, charming, uh, caring people. And there's, there's a great deal of respect and uh, the consideration factor is, is, is just uh, it's incomparable. And I, I love Sacramento now. I haven't been to Sacramento in years. I, I cowboyed not long away from here. I learned steer roping many years ago in Marysville. No, oh, well, that's real close. Yeah, and uh, I've done a few rodeos, and I've been to Sacramento, and uh, I, I love it, but I've never enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed it this time. Hey, I'm staying in a beautiful <laughs> hotel. <laughs> I said, well, I can't believe I'm being treated like this. This is unbelievable. I looked at the price on the doors, you know, and the door, you know, the plaque where you are here. You know, fire escape here, room rate. I went, <laughs> you better enjoy this, Pete, because there's no time again you're ever going to see that kind of a price on the door that you're paying for. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it's just an absolutely wonderful experience. We are very glad to have you, Mr. Coleman. Thank you. All right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap the uh, QA and we'll break out into interviews. Uh, we'll do, a, um, you mind doing photos first? Is that okay, sir? Either way. Okay, me... let's do photos for, you know, sorry, Chris, what? Well, I, I, I would like to, when like, you do Q&A, to ask the one dumb question, because everyone has to do the one dumb question. Okay, this is, this is my brother and the assistant director of press, Chris, <laughs> who is also 30 years old today. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Happy <All right>. <laughs> Um, because I know you don't lots of, um, of voices um, besides the Transformers. Um, what is your favorite voice that you like doing? Like, like you like even if you're like at home, you're like I'm gonna use this voice. You know, just hear right, like kids. Um, what's your favorite voice to to usually use? Well, certainly the the reaction that I get from Optimus Prime would have to take number one uh, because of the the impact that he has and and the the, the sense of. The reaction that I get, it's, it's just heartwarming that somebody could be so respondent to to a voice, you know. But uh, Eeyore, I guess, is the one that delights children the most. And when I say, hello, thanks for noticing me, I mean, that, like, huh? that, that warms my heart, too, you know. What a blessing life I have to get stuff like that for free. All right, well, thank you.